Today's video is for people that are in the market for buying a pond vacuum. Now there's lots of different types of pond vacuums out there. We're going to tell you which is the best one to buy and also you'd be pleased to know it's not the most expensive one. I'm going to tell you which one we use day in and day out. We've been using it for the last over 10 years. We'll show you why it's the best and also if you watch to the end I'm going to give you a little demonstration where lots of people have been going wrong using this particular model. So if you want to learn about ponds, you've come to the right place. All you have to do is subscribe. We'll show you exactly how we do it, what type of products we use, make your life a lot easier. Now before we get into pond vacuums, it's important to know that pond vacuums aren't magic. So. There isn't a perfect pond vacuum out there. There are lots of pond vacuums out there, but a lot of people buy a pond vacuum expecting it to suck everything up and just completely clean the pond. Unfortunately, that isn't always the case. When should you use a pond vacuum? Now, it all depends on the type of waste and rubbish you've got in your pond. So, you can't expect a pond vacuum to suck everything up just doesn't work that way. The pond vacuum is okay for sucking up small bits of debris and I would say light silt. If you have heavy silt and lots of debris, don't bother buying a pond vacuum. It's not going to work. If you have a new pond, say for instance a year old and it's building up a bit of rubbish in the bottom and you'd be you know maintaining it as fair, fairly well as you can, then I'd say buy a pond vacuum. That should manage quite nicely. If you've got a really old pond that's absolute cake from the rubbish, you know, just put a net down there and it pulls up all sorts of stuff and you can hardly bring your net up, then the pond vacuum won't do it. You're probably gonna have to have the pond drained and clean and start again. What pond vacuum do we use? So now I'm not just saying this because we use it, I'm telling you this now. This is the best pond vacuum out there. Um, now it's the Pondovac 4. I've seen some reviews online where it didn't get the best reviews, but I'm telling you now, the reason why it didn't is because a lot of people don't know how to use it properly. Okay, so with the Pondovac 4, that's been out for over 10 years, the newer model, which I was a little bit disappointed in, is the Pondovac 5. Now the Pond of Act 4, you can buy now for about £380, which isn't too bad. The bigger model is almost double, I think it's just over double, it's about £780. £780 for a Pond Vacuum. Come on, <laughs> that's a lot of money. So the only reason why I don't like the, there's two reasons why I don't like the Pond of Act 5, is yeah, I mean, it, it may suck a bit faster than the Pondovac 4, but maybe, I don't know, 10, 20% more, it's not that much. But there's a pump inside it, which obviously when it fills up, it pumps the water up, which is nice. Um, but you have to have a debris bag. So you put the debris bag in the, the vacuum and all the dirt goes into that. Now, which is all right if you're just doing a little bit of work, but us as a trade, we need vacuums to run all the time and we haven't got time to be fanning around with debris bags. So the point of the debris bag is that it will block the pump if you, if you don't use the bag, which is to us no good. So that's why, and the main reason why, the Pondovac 4 is a lot better than the Pondovac 5. Okay, so here we have our Pondovac. So as you can see, well used. Um, done so many jobs with this machine. And uh, unfortunately, like I said before, no uh, vacuum's perfect and it does have a few uh, mishaps and I'm going to go through those with you now. So if you do have one of those, you're going to know exactly what to do so you can pump or vacuum for a lot longer. But when vacuuming, this fills up and then empties itself and it's all gravity based. So this is where a lot of people go wrong. This needs to be exactly the same height as the outlet over here or lower down. You can't set it up where the vacuum and the outlet is higher up. 
than this part here. So any higher, this won't empty properly and it will co can cause problems with the chambers filling up and actually working at all. So some people have it too low down, the vacuum, and the outlet has to be lower than the outlet there. So that can't be up here or anything like that. Another thing you can't do is, again, the outlet pipe, you need to make sure it doesn't get blocked off at the end. Make sure that it's free flowing all the time. So sometimes when you're pumping a lot of stuff out, you forget about it and it builds up around the outside of the nozzle and then eventually blocks up like that. And then the water will start backing up inside instead of going out. Now, the next one, lots of people don't know this, this little nozzle here needs to be slightly open. You need to let a little bit of air into here when sucking. The vacuum doesn't like being put straight under water and just a, few, a pure um, cylinder of water going into the vacuum, it does like a bit of air. So you might slow it down a slightly, but the more air you get going into here, helps the chambers drop. Next thing I mentioned before, the vacuums don't like sucking up large solids or anything too big especially like twigs things like that uh, stones anything bigger than like say a marble size what happens obviously it goes into here but when it enters into this little nozzle here it can go two ways there's two valves in here one valve goes for one of the cylinders and the other valve goes for another one um, if a stone gets stuck there's a little flap inside each of these chambers um, and if stone can get stuck in between that flap it will stop the chambers from actually um, close, opening and closing and then it causes problems with the actual vacuum and it won't work so little twigs things like that you need to get those out get them out and stones etc bad news so don't suck them up if you can okay the next thing is say for instance you're vacuuming away everything is going nicely and then all of a sudden just lose the suction. So generally it means what happens is inside one of the chambers hasn't actually switched. Now, what I normally do, if it's just a case of the chambers not actually switching over, you switch off the vacuum, what you'll say, what you'll hear are both of the, um, the cylinders inside, they drop. As soon as they both drop, most of the time you can just switch it back on again. So if you're pumping away, and all of a sudden it's lost the suction, just switch it off, let both the chambers drop, and then switch back on again. Nine out of 10 times, that works just fine. When you clean this out, it's important to make sure that this goes on neatly all the way around. So it causes a seal. Sometimes when you put them on, um, it, you know, you've clamped it down, but there's a bit of an air gap. If there's a bit of an air gap, it won't cause enough suction so it won't work so make sure that that's on properly um, generally if you're pumping away and all of a sudden it's filling up and it's not actually discharging um, sometimes water comes out of here which is not a good thing um, but if it sounds like it's struggling and it's not changing chambers it probably means it needs cleaning out so so as you can see Ours needs a clean out, but what happens? It's not actually changing chambers. In here, in here, you get a build-up sand. Now this thing doesn't particularly like sand. But if it, what happens if you get lots of dirt in between? If these aren't going up and down. They can't change over. So. Basically these just float to the top, as soon as that hits in there, then that one starts sucking. Then that one hits to the top, then that one drops, and that keeps sucking like that. But if it's filling up and it's not discharging, you probably too much sediment or stone in this part here, and the actual chambers aren't moving, and that will just mean it will just keep filling up and filling up, um, which obviously is a bad thing. So make sure you clean inside this chamber, and obviously you need cleaning too. Which make sure there's nothing blocking these and these need to be moving freely up and down. Another good tip, if you can, is to raise the vacuum up. 
So, raise the vacuum up, discharge hose again, lower than the vacuum, that will help. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, let us know, click on the like button and subscribe for more. See you next time.